Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. The wind is blowing through her hair. We like to head out on the road. And you know we don't really care. Cause we're just doing what we want. She likes it when I treat her good. She likes it when How's it growing everyone? Well, another week has come and gone and we're on to the next step of making edibles here on Beginner Buds. As you may remember, last week we learned how to decarboxylate cannabis in order to activate the THC inside our bud so that it could be absorbed via ingestion. Now it came time to decide what we were going to make. And as we told you last week, we went with gummies. So what exactly do you need to make these infused treats? Well, the most important ingredient is what makes our gummies quote unquote infused. For us, we need some cannabis infused coconut oil. So let's get into it. All right guys, so we've got to admit, we've been having a little bit of fun during these last few weeks as we use our end product in a different way than normal. Usually we find some way to light up, whether it's with a dry pipe, a bong, or any other number of ways. Wanting to explore a little, we thought what better way to mix things up than to make some edibles. So that's exactly what we started. One thing about this though, don't expect to just whip some up real quick. When it comes down to it, this is a several hours long process. And that's if you don't break up the steps and spread them out over a few days like we did. Decarboxylation can take anywhere from 30 minutes to eight hours, depending on the method and intensity of heat. Next, we set out to make some cannabis infused coconut oil to be used in edible gummies. And this process only added more time to the whole ordeal. Of course, First we had to gather the supplies necessary, which consisted of a double boiler, we used a pot and a glass bowl with lid, decarboxylated cannabis, coconut oil, cheesecloth, and cooking twine. Remember here, if it's your first time making anything with cannabis, go slow and make a small batch. You don't need to go blowing a bunch of your stash, only to mess things up and leave you with nothing to get you lifted. For us, we tried three different methods of decarboxylation. So we have a bit more than we would suggest, but each jar is only a half ounce of material. As promised, we decided to keep the decarboxylated cannabis separate in order to run a test and see which method was most effective between the crock pot, stove, and oven. Either way, our infused coconut oil is going to be an even one to one ratio. What this means is, regardless of how much you want to make, you're going to need exactly the same amount of cannabis as you do coconut oil. For example, we used a half cup of material and a half a cup of coconut oil. Someone who may want to make more might use one cup of cannabis, but they would need one cup of coconut oil as well. With all that ready to go, it was time to get ready for what was soon to come. So, because we didn't want to deal with the hassle of straining the cannabis out of the oil later on, this is where the cheesecloth came in. What you're going to want to do is unroll and cut off enough to fold over a few times, but not so much that the cloth absorbs an excess of oil. Once that is done, fold it over a few times, leaving a nice space to place your cannabis. Another note here, make sure you have enough layers to ensure that no cannabis will pop through the holes. Simply place the decarboxylated cannabis on top of the cheesecloth and wrap it up similar to a burrito. We folded the shorter ends over the pile of cannabis first before rolling the rest up just like you would a joint. Rather than lick it to seal things up though, this is where the cooking twine comes into play. Simply wrap up the bundle and tie a knot making sure things won't come undone. With that ready to go, it was time for the next step. 
So, what did we need? Well, it was finally time to start cooking, so we grabbed the double boiler and filled it with as much water as we could before it hit the bottom of the glass bowl. Bring the water inside up to a boil on high before turning it down to a simmer, which is usually low on the stove. Once that's up to heat, it's time to add your two simple ingredients. Like we previously mentioned, for us, it was a half cup of decarboxylated cannabis, which was now wrapped up nice and neat inside our cheesecloth, and a half a cup of coconut oil. So in the bowl they went. The oil will slowly melt before turning clear, but this is where things get really interesting. The infusing process is a slow and gradual process. Essentially what this means is that you must be patient. Turning things up hotter in order to go quicker will only destroy the same terpenes you're hoping to later enjoy and potentially even render your end product absolutely worthless. In the end, the double boiler method takes anywhere between 6 and 8 hours, making it rather time consuming. Regardless, you're going to want to stay patient and vigilant. You don't want things stuck in the same spot for too long as it could create hot spots or even burn the oil after a while. So make sure you stay near the pot and stir it frequently throughout the entire process. One other thing you're going to want to pay attention to is your pot. As you're boiling water for hours on end, the evaporation process will eventually take its toll, leaving you with absolutely nothing to keep the temperature regulated. In short, water can only get up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so anything being cooked in a double boiler will be limited to this temperature. Once the water is gone though, your oil won't have a barrier from the flame, meaning that you could end up burning things, so make sure you add water when needed. Remember, make sure you stir frequently, and we also flip the wrapped cannabis about every 15 minutes to ensure the entire bundle stayed saturated throughout the process. In the end, we went the entire eight hours before finally calling it quits, but we weren't quite done. Although we did a good job with the cheesecloth, we wanted to make sure that the oil we would later consume was as free of contaminants as humanly possible, meaning that we would have to end up straining it anyway. Fortunately for us, this only took the use of a coffee filter. Folding one into a cone-like shape, we placed it into one of the jars we would store our oil in and poured our oil inside. Personally, we warmed the jars up with some hot water before this step, as we didn't want to pour the hot oil inside of a cooler jar, only for it to crack and make an incredibly difficult mess to clean up. As the cheesecloth did its job, most of the oil simply passed right through, but the filter did get clogged up with stuff with just a little more to go. In the end, we needed between two and three filters per jar to get the most oil that we could. From there, you simply seal the jar with abandoned lid before throwing it in the fridge to cool. Of course, the refrigerator helps extend the oil's two month life, but it's probably best to use it within this time period just to be safe. Now, Although we decided to use a double boil for this, there are other methods you can use if you don't have a double boiler available. In the end, we simply went this way because the double boiler ensures that the temperatures of the oil can't get too hot, thereby limiting the potential for human error. Regardless, if you don't have one available, you can either use a crock pot or just a saucepan. For the crock pot, simply place the wrapped cannabis and oil inside for four to six hours making sure to stir frequently. Likewise, the process is similar for the saucepan. Just throw your cannabis and oil in a pot, set the flame to low, and ensure that you stir everything frequently. Once the time is up, simply strain and done. One more tip worth putting out there, no matter which method you use, try not to squeeze out the cheesecloth throughout the process. This doesn't do anything for the potency and will only add more unnecessary chlorophyll and the taste that comes along with that to your oil. In short, being patient and gentle will ensure that your infused oil comes out the highest quality possible given the circumstances. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You just made some THC-infused coconut oil ready to put into, well, whatever the heck we want. For us, we're going to make some gummies, so make sure you tune in next week as we show you the final steps in the process and maybe even try them out. 
Until then, make sure you guys check out our social media accounts as they're loaded chock full of additional content. And as always, keep learning, keep growing. Catch you later, guys.